review and the news. Pop culture, video games, movies, and shoes. Quincy and Justin with a nerdy forecast. So stay a while and welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. Welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And you're the host, Justin. We are currently surviving the pandemic for now. We'll we, are, we are in a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we were in a bunker because that would explain the splitting headache I have. <laughs> I, you know, I'm right there beside you. Like, I wanted to take a nap before podcast. You're gonna hear me like drone on for a couple seconds, but it, it, like I've got a headache there too. I like we're we're fighting right now. It's not we don't we do uh, not. No, no, we're we are just saying we're fatigued. Yeah. We are not infected by any way, shape, or form. <laughs> No, we're, we're fatigued. It's from being on such visual wa- uh, like such a visual watch to make sure that we don't get infected. God dang! Um, I just have what I had last week, which is the Lipton cranberry pomegranate green tea. Um, I'm just doubling up on my antioxidants, trying to keep myself clean, trying to get some more water in. Wash those system. hands, people. Wash them. You guys dirty. And and understand. Uh, Germex, that's great when you can't wash your hands, but if you can wash your hands over Germexing, do it, because Germex does also kill any alcohol-based hand sanitizer. It does kill a good bacteria, too. Yeah, of course. So, it's just like when you take antibiotics and they tell you, go eat yogurt, because the antibiotics are going to kill all kinds of shit, not just the bad shit, primarily the bad shit, but the good shit, too. So, um... Today I am doing it's uh, the Starbucks caramel cream. Um, well, it has the uh, hyphen of it. Cram. 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 I-, I wonder if that's their way of trying to make it say crap because that's what it is. Uh, I do not like this. Okay. We got this for Lauren because she's huge on caramel Car- coffees. Caramel, yes. Uh, caramel. Caramel. There's a second A. Yeah. And people say pop when they should say soda. It's a fucked up place. You're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you also have a. Uh, an extra drink. We both have extra drinks just yes. in case because I got a, an energy drink because he got a soda. Yes, because I stay hydrated by dehydrating myself. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're, we're all over the place. We're I'm tired. drinking we're, water. Yeah, you are drinking water. I am drinking water through this tea. I am. We're trying. We're trying, damn it. Honestly, you're the one I worry more about because you work with the general public. Oh, God. I'm lucky if I come in contact with a person once every week with my job. Yeah, so. yeah, you're right. All right, but, but good news. Oh, let me finish about the coffee real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. So we got it, we made it, and I'm I'm a couple sips in, and I'm like, I don't know that I like this. And Lauren goes, okay, so it's not just me. I don't like it either. Um, I was like, it has a chemical taste to it. There's Ooh. something chemically. Now hold on, this. you think it could be a bad bag? Maybe. That mine buzzed. Yeah, I know. Um, maybe. But the way she described it, I felt was perfect. She says it tastes like sunscreen. It tastes Ooh, like sunscreen. Okay. Now, see, that would be where I would say grab your receipt, do an exchange. Because you might have gotten a bad bag. I don't know where the hell my receipt is. Well, fuck. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not a fan. If someone else wants to tell me, oh, no, it's actually a really amazing coffee, I might give it a, a different batch another shot. But for now, just, mm, no, I don't like it. Hang on, I'm going to look at something real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, hold on. Let me see. Uh, uh, fucking goddammit. Uh, <laughs> Starbucks. Caramel. Caramel creme bag. Now, let's see here. The ratings for it on through Amazon is a 4.3 with 42 ratings. Okay. So, let's go take a look at ratings real quick. Like, I can't believe I'm looking up ratings for this. 10% of them are one star. That's one person. That's one person. Uh, or no, one that actually left a review. Okay, yeah, one that left a review. Uh, I will never buy another Starbucks coffee again in my life. You have repeatedly disrespected police officers? Well, I'm sorry? <laughs> the last that I he- heard of was when your barista, a minimum wage coffee server, asked six police officers who have paid for their own coffee to leave because it was making someone uncomfortable comfortable as i remember hearing about that in the news i did too give me a break police officers are the first ones you call when there's a rowdy person or a burglary or robbery and you have never asked to leave you you go straight to hell blah 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 okay blah. okay so blah, this, this is... has nothing to do with the copy give this... me a two-star rating <laughs> yeah give me give me uh, three percent have two-star ratings 
Bland and lacking caramel flavor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Straight to the point. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, did not detect any caramel flavoring. Was also surprised the expiration date was only a couple months out when I purchased the coffee. Well, certain coffees. With... It's the added shit that pushes. Yeah, because down. you can't you can't put any preservatives on like sugar, so to speak. Yeah, you get you get straight uh, just a straight fucking black nothing funky done to it coffee that should last you through the next six wars oh god you know like um there's mres being opened up from freaking 80 years freaking that dehydrated stuff the uh instant still being poured into a cup eventually drunk eventually i'm gonna do instant coffee i just really have to pull my energy together i've never had it and i've heard nothing no no uh, Instant? uh, instant coffee i've never had instant coffee but i hear nothing good about instant coffee my mom liked it uh, you're okay. You're making that face like you're gonna try and. Bully I my love mom. your mother. You forget that I'm sitting across this table. Yes, you forget. There's a whole table between us. No, I love your mother. Um, I don't know her taste, so fair enough. I was trying to think of a joke, and really, all I could think of is she smokes, and most smokers I meet have bad taste buds because of all the cigarettes. So, okay, my brother. I'm, I'm not gonna go against that. My brother even said now that he's quit, he's like, dude, things taste more. I'm like, it's oh yeah, fucking weird. And I'm going to say on record right now, my mom vapes now, and even she's admitted that you know some things are a little bit different. Yeah. And well, the taste buds are sensitive fucking things. Go drink a cup of coffee and bite into a donut. It's a completely different world than just biting into a donut. It, it for something about the two together, your fucking taste buds go nuts. Same thing with like Danishes and stuff. That's why they're breakfast things. Interesting. They're supposed to play off the coffees. Oh. You're not being really a coffee guy. You never <laughs> experience it. Well, I mean, you get the same thing off a of tea. I drink an Earl Grey, and I would have a scone. Yeah, like a scone, or um... and it it comes off very, very much more uh, da, 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 rich. Not well, mac, not macaroon, but a not macaroon it begins with an M. Uh, well, the find... ones that look like leaves. They make them in the first Transporter movie. F- uh, now, <laughs> uh, uh, pastries that. <laughs> Start with M. Uh, 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 Madeline's. Thank you. I don't know if you actually drink that with tea, but I feel like you would. I would. Yeah. I would. Uh, so last week we watched two gambler movies. Um, I'm sorry. I know you're trying to get to this, but you remi- this whole thing reminded me of another shit coffee I had recently. Oh, okay. You know what? Let's hit this up real quick. I went to Krispy Kreme. <gasps> I tried their new Butterfinger Donut. Okay. Was that good? It wasn't bad. I mean, um, it's, it's literally Butterfinger chunks on top of a donut. They get, there's, they've got two versions of it. Okay. I wanted the one that's like more like a Boston cream where it's like a whole donut filled. And they gave me the one with a hole in the middle, but that donut still has filling like in the in within the, the donut still. Okay. All right. It was okay. Um, I feel like maybe the filling should be made to taste a little bit more like Butterfinger because you really are only getting the Butterfinger from the stuff on top. Oh, okay. I mean... Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't bad. Where my issue was, was Lauren ordered an iced coffee, regular size, for $2 and some change. And I ordered a regular sized blended caramel coffee uh, for $4 and some change. And when I got them, the cup was about that big. What huh. do you think? How many ounces? Uh, looks to be about maybe 10 ounces. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. If, if, it's this, if it's like this wide, yeah, about 10-ish ounces. Yeah. So you got to figure ten ounce drink, hers filled with ice for two some two dollars some change. That was practically that, a shot. That, that's called cutting costs. Um, mine being a blended drink, so I get the full cup, but still four dollars some change. And then the coffee itself, not great. Oh, was that terrible? Oh, it just it tasted like a just sugar and ass. Well, you would know what ass tastes like. Well, you know, I breathe it in you all day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're like, if I'm going down with this ship, I'm taking you with yeah, me. Yeah, I'm fucking taking you down. All right, two gambler movies. Two gambler movies. We watched this one first? Uh, we did watch Pool Hall Junkies first because it was, uh, quote unquote, your favorite and also the the easier to take in of the two. Lauren, I think, was the one that voted for this first, though. Okay. I was down for either one because I love both of them. And I had actually seen Rounders before I'd seen Pool Hall Junkies. Oh. Um, but she, I think she voted for this one first. But that's fine. Okay. So uh, I like Pool Hall Junkies a lot. A whole lot. Would I watch it again? Oh, hell yeah. It got some chuckles out of it. It got some really... There was some really good scenes, and Christopher Walken yeah. just devoured the scenery. Um, when he was going up against uh, Tony? The 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 guy who trained up the kid. 
I don't remember his name, but yeah. Okay, even still, when he was having that that fucking thing of uh, how much your ring, how much is your ring? Well, you want to up it, you you know. So what? It's fifty grand. I'm a millionaire. I just go get another. <laughs> yeah, no, he just the, the whole thing about it. It just made it seem like it was Christopher Walken talking. So and God damn it, God you, damn it, that was good. The, every every actor played their role superbly. Yeah. Um. And the one scene that you enjoy quoting, <laughs> what happened to your hand? Cut myself Cut shaving. It, like that's that's a good one. <laughs> that one and the choke me. What? What? Oh, choke yeah. me! I like it. Oh my god! Oh my god! God. <laughs> And I'm like, now, now, and if, if that was what, 2002? Yeah. Now, if you do it in 2020, people are like, oh, okay, yeah, that's normal now. Uh, I just love it. Like, he stops her. You don't have stuffed animals on your bed, do you? No. What? No. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> he keeps pulling his hand up towards her. What are you doing? Choke me. What? Choke me. <laughs> Choke me. I like it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so you have Michael Rosenbaum in this, who goes on to be Lex Luthor mm-hmm. uh, for Smallville. Um, and then the one that gets weirded out when she says "choke me," he goes on to be the guy in Hell on Wheels. Yes, with the big beard and all that. Yep, yep. Um, movie happened because the main character is the writer and director, and he's really good at pull. And he swears he was being hustled one day by a guy, and he called him out on it. But he had also been hustling the guy, kind of type of thing. And uh, they became best friends and wrote the movie together. Right. Neither on. one will say a. Uh, neither one will say uh, whether or not it uh. Who won the uh, won it? I think this just popped onto Netflix I'm, too, just to tick you off. I swear to fucking god, I'm checking right now. I cannot find this movie anywhere. I had to fight. We yeah to it, get this fucking movie. okay. So Zia Records, great place. We love it. Uh, it has a little bit of flakiness every now and again, yeah. as would be. To be for... fair, they were moving stores at the time. Yes, that's what I was about to mention. They were changing locations, so of course a little bit of information got a little lost. Uh, Quincy had like a, hey, can you order this for me? Kind of uh, one of those order tickets. I don't really know what to call it. Like a transfer. Thing. Yeah, they were transferring it from another store. Yeah, in Arizona, right? Yes. So, of course, it's not going to be able to transfer to a store that doesn't exist. So, it was more along the lines of, when we transfer stores, we'll do it. Eh, that never happened. But one, the, the, one of the last few times you popped in there, you found it. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's fucking amazing. Just the fact that they'll always have something. When you when we both go in, we're not leaving unless we're getting that thing we're going for and something else. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I do have a new goal for things to get from there. Oh, yeah? um, and I'm not finding it on here. I'm going to double check one more time. Okay. I'm going to spell it exactly the way they have it there. Oh, well. <laughs> I just clicked this and it said, uh, lost your way. Uh, okay. Maybe it might have been earlier. Maybe it, it fell it's off. It's not. It's not coming up. Okay. Well, it was. So did this. I get the up. related to when I <sighs> look it up. Okay. Um, well, fuck me then. I have a new thing that I'm gonna try to get from Zia slowly. What's that? There was a time when Bruce Willis was not Bruce Willis. This is before Die Hard. Oh, we're doing the comedy things. Before all that, he was. It was a comedic role. He was a TV star. With um, Sybil Shepherd, uh, they did a show called uh, Moonlighting. That's right. You showed me this. Yeah, ABC show in the '80s comedy to the point that when he they announced that he was going to be doing Die Hard, no one took it serious that he was going to be doing an action movie, and people were actually laughing at the fucking trailer in the theater and shit like that. Um, and now can't imagine Bruce Willis not being an action guy. You can't fucking find the show anywhere, despite the fact that Sony. Somehow, I don't know why Sony, I don't know all the specifics, released in like the early 2000s, all five seasons on DVD. For our region, too. A couple other regions as well, but mostly just our region. Um, I was looking on Amazon, and for the first two seasons, they want like $150. So you're hoping that Z is going to get them? I'm hoping, because I'm like, I love the show, and it's not available digital. It's not available on any streaming sites. But I'm not spending $150 for two seasons. And then it's like 70 for one of the other seasons and 50 for one of the other ones and so on. You're right. That would be rather terrible. So know, that's yeah. a new goal. Of mine. So you like Bull Hall Junkies. I do. Uh, let's go over the ratings. Uh, 33 on the tomato tomato meter. Um, and then that's for critics. That's for critics with only 43 total actually doing reviews on it. Mm-hmm. 
But then you go over to the other side, the Oregon score, 80 fucking 7. And you're telling me. It became like a cult classic, I guess you could say. I guess. But uh, with 20,000. So that means 13% of this entire entire audience said, no, nah, this isn't me. No. Yeah. But then that means you have 87% of them going, yeah, this is a good movie, which means 87% of people have good heads on their shoulders. 87% of people have 20,000 people. Like, come on. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Let's pull up some of the uh, critic ones. I want to see how bad the critics are like. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, whatever you want to say about this Mars Cal- Caligan? I think that's how you say it, yeah. That's hmm. the main character. The, oh. The director or writer. That's his name. All right. Who is an avid Q man in real life? <laughs> he would seem to be able to sink anything. Darned if he doesn't make this whole movie disappear. A two out of five. I thought he was great in it. Uh, all of it seems so familiar and so trite. We know exactly where this is going. That's from Roper. I mean, but you didn't. Like, you didn't see certain things coming, right? I'm not going to lie, sure, go ahead. I, I pretty much did. How it was going to be. Oh, yeah? Put your money where your mouth is. Do it again. Do it again. Did you know that he was going to hustle him and buy the the turn? That one, no. Or that it was tan no, I, for the I money? Just paid, I just paid $5,000 for your turn. Your turn. Yeah. No, I didn't. But at the same time, that was the only real major turnaround. Um, oh, okay, so Roper doesn't like it, but Ebert does. But read what it says. Is this a great movie? Not at all. Is it more or less consistently entertaining? Yes. Yeah. And he which, gives it a three out of four. Which is a f- pretty fair. Yeah. I mean, he's been a lot harsher on things. Mm-hmm. This one just says, quote, not available. <laughs> Thanks, I don't know what happened. Thanks, Emmanuel Levy of EmmanuelLevy.com. Um, Wait a minute. If this guy can get a fucking thing without a goddamn <laughs> quote, let's get ourselves up there. Fuck. Uh, if, if you saw you... this, then you were hustled. Wow. Yeah, see, I don't agree with you. I love this movie. Yeah. Fuck it. Moving on. Moving on. The second movie. A bit more of a serious one, but still had its chuckles. Rumdas. So we're talking uh, Edward Norton and uh, Matt Damon. Man. Matt Damon what at this an, point. What an interesting combo. Yeah, Matt Damon at this point still pretty uh, pretty fresh off of uh, Good Will Hunting, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, this is 98, so. Mm-hmm. Just like near after. Um, very good. Very good. For living in Vegas and learning about most of the people of, that they were talking about, uh, I've watched the World Series of Poker a couple times, so of course I knew the names Johnny Chan. I knew um, uh, God Mayhew. Uh, oh man, Jesus face. Uh, <sighs> Poker Jesus <laughs> Ferguson, Jesus face Ferguson. Yeah. Um, they they just kept naming name after name after name, and I'm just like, do you know why they always make it to the? To the final table at World Series, it isn't you know luck of the draw. It's a skill game, mm-hmm. and to a degree, yeah, I can agree with that. But at the same time, all it takes is just a, a guy to say, you know, I'm not folding. I'm sticking with the hand. Yeah. You, you basically have to get inside the head of the other players. It, it's less about the hand you're given. I mean, you can be given a great hand, and then you just you're good. But a lot of it is you're not always going to get a great hand. So a lot of it is getting in the head of the other player and making them. Worry about what you have yeah. and, and not believe in what they have. And having him go to Atlantic City and sitting at a, a high rollers table, just relaxing, and Johnny Chan just steps up and he bluffs him to fold. Yeah. And Johnny, of course, would be like, so did you have the, I think it was a flush. So did you have it? And he goes, I don't remember. And I'm just like. There's a couple other poker movies I'd definitely like to watch. Like, um, Real Talk, that that was strong. That yeah. was very strong. And it, he was like, that's the reason why I did what I did to KGB. Yeah. You know, tried to play him up. Pay this man his money. <laughs> he, John Malkovich is great. He is I fucking love him. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, 
But you, you, so you enjoyed this one, right? Oh uh, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoyed both of them. They were both very, very entertaining. I will admit, thanks to this new schedule that I'm on, I was drowning out a little bit, but you kind of kicked me awake. Yeah, I'm gonna um, pour a pot of coffee on you tonight. Yeah, Just, uh, <sighs> yeah, that's fine. Well, guns will be going off and stuff, so hopefully you won't fall asleep. <laughs> oh yeah, guns and hopefully a really good story. It's not; they're both great stories. Yeah, so I'm I'm super excited. I'm especially excited for three ten. Okay. So uh, three ten is the one that's not a true story. Um, and it's actually technically a remake, and I do believe the remake was based off of a like Sunday morning cartoon, but I could be wrong. But over to the uh, the numbers for rounders. Let's head back a little bit. Um, sixty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but eighty seven percent. And now so, this one's a big number. Now hold on, this is a big number. When I say eighty seven percent, this one is seventy eight thousand one hundred and ninety six people saying so. So eighty seven eighty seven percent of this audience likes this movie. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that many people like this movie, but then when you look at the 65% for Rotten Tomatoes, you're like, then what the fuck? Um, let's take a look at bad. Uh, the end result is still short of a winning hand since the screenplay is so utterly predictable. Now with Rounders... Yeah, you know everything's going to turn out in the end for him. I mean, if it didn't... It would have been un- it would have been more unexpected if it really yeah. fucked him over. If KGB won the second time and was just like, "You'll never beat me." Yeah, you know, it would have been it would have been a better turnaround. But I think what made it interesting was that you might expect him to go and win the girl back and go back to school, and he doesn't. Instead, he's like, "See ya," and I'm heading to Vegas. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to become one of those world championship poker guys. Yeah, and I'll say that part you don't quite expect as much because he had like given up on the whole thing. Yeah, and. The one unrealistic scene was when he was heading up those steps and ran into her, and he, you know, she was like, "Yeah, you know, I, I like you again." I was just like, "Where the fuck did that come from?" Yeah, you literally left him in the dust. He won back a little bit of scrap cash so that way he can pay off uh, the other guy. I don't remember his name either. I know it was a weird name. Grandma. Uh, grandma. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think. I was like, "It was something stupid." What was it? It was Grandma. That's yeah. right. <laughs> he he paid him off. You know, had a little bit of extra scrap cash, and then all of a sudden, oh, I love you again. Yeah. No. When he's up, she loves him. When he's down, she. Yeah. I mean, she first but gets mad at him because she he, finds the money, and therefore he's up because she found the money. But then it's like, does she love him because of it? It's so weird. Yeah. Also, like she wanted him to turn his back on Worm, and it's like, yes, Worm is not a good person but she doesn't know that her whole thing is well you put your poker life behind because i told you to and it's like worm is in his friend for a long fucking time if he decides he wants to turn his back on worm because worm's a shitty person fine but you don't get to ask him that type of thing so and the poor guy just got out of prison yeah and he's called worm like that's terrible too (laughs) so Mm. um Though it's a good-looking flick with some smart acting and a few flashy runs, I ba- it barely breaks uh, even dramatically and feels overall like a good cha- a chance wasted. 2.5 out of 4. Okay. I mean, that's a bit harsh. A little bit harsh. I still think that it doesn't necessarily break even. It, it leans a little more toward the positive because it it nudges a lot of thinking. Yeah, because there, the, there's also a level of like, you don't want to watch a sad story all the time. You want to see people win. Yeah. So sometimes it, things end on high notes, and sure you can call that predictable, but you can also call it, you know, a happy ending, which is what people want. Pretty good. Because life's not a happy ending, so we go to our entertainment to see it. Yeah. Um, I will say the one thing I've never understood. Why didn't he get with, uh, I can't remember the actress's name, so I'm just going to call her Jean Grey. Oh. Like, yeah. they, they're they into the same shit. They, She's yeah, attractive. She, was, she was ready to rumble. And that was after they uh, he had broke up with. Yeah. So, I don't know. I have no clue. Like, there, I guess he was too hung up on her. I don't know. Take her to Vegas with you, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Stop a little white chapel. Jean, my glasses. <laughs> Jean, my glasses. Now, he makes Sonic movies, and I don't know where she's at. Yeah, I don't know where she's at either, but hopefully she's doing better than Jean. My glasses. I hate that character. I was never a fan. Uh, Uh, This week, though, we've already kind of mentioned a little bit. We're going to do... 310 to Yuma. 310 to Yuma and Tombstone. 
Um, and at some point, White Earp will be homework for you because White Earp is too fucking long. Mm-hmm. It's so. on Netflix, so I, I, I'm on it. Yeah, you'll get there. I'll get there. All right, moving into the news. Should we get depressing first? I mean, most of it's depressing. Most so. of it's depressing. Yeah, go depressing. All right. E3 2010 canceled. Yep. I wish I wish I can like make that a little more longer of a headline, but that is the entire headline. E3 of 2020 is canceled. There, I made it as long as I possibly could. It's, oh, I didn't mean to punch the mic. This a, sucks for a couple of reasons. One, it sucks for a lot of reasons. Well, I mean, they could still sit down and they could put together videos or they could have someone do a panel or something like that and just do it all through video to where people don't have to leave their homes, sit at home and watch it. So we still get the same news, but it sucks for all the people who were hoping to go and play these games. But yeah. your health is more important. But where it really sucks is how much revenue and money was just lost i would say a little bit of a lot because i mean whoever goes to these get some good stuff but that also makes me wonder all the uh freebies i bet they're gonna just start giving away on twitter so keep your eyes open on twitter possibly or yeah. instagram um but there was a, a statement by phil spencer sir phil spencer of uh nice xbox who says given this decision this year we'll celebrate the next generation of gaming with the xbox community and all those who love to play via Xbox digital event. So that means they're still doing yep. they're still doing something. Yeah. And I can't be too angry or agitated that they are wanting to do that. No, and I, I was never uh angry that uh, that they canceled this. I'm just more sad that things have gotten so out of control that they had to cancel this. Yeah. And I mean WWE Games was supposed to make their headway at E3 2020. Which what? one? Uh Warner Brothers Games. Okay. Yeah. But that's okay. Maybe PAX West. Maybe Prime. Maybe um, Tokyo Game Show in December, if like, latest. Maybe just pull a Nintendo. Just drop a video. Just drop a 25-minute... Oh, God. Um, Do all the snapping you want, you know? <laughs> I don't think... Uh, I think they're trademarking that now. Trademarking a snap? Trademarking the powerful snap. Okay, call it something else. Call it the Thanos snap. Disney wins. <laughs> um, I, there's there's ways around the closure, but I, I definitely don't feel like this is a bad decision. It needed to happen. Um, they can still get the information to us, and companies were already pulling out, so it makes sense to just cancel the whole thing. Um, along with that closure, there's a bunch of uh, blah, 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 blah. There's a bunch of other closures and delays. Um, Disney is delaying Mulan, and <laughs> fucking New Mutants gets delayed again. This time because Disney's worried about health, not because Fox made a movie to sit on it. So you can't be mad at that. <laughs> no, I'm not mad about it. Yeah. So a lot of things are getting really uh, shoved back. We once again can't be mad at it. No. We we enjoy healthy people. Yes. We don't like unhealthy people. Mm -hmm. Um, because let's see, Mulan. Um, what's it called? Uh, Falcon Mutants. and Winter Soldier got Falcon nudged. and Winter Soldier, uh, they had to postpone some of their filming in Prague. Yeah, so that's fine. If it has to be delayed, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, WandaVision got nudged a little bit further. I don't know Even, how much filming's done on that one. I want to say it's done because it was supposed to be uh, summer. Set for summer us. this year, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Like, they were, they had mentioned. I'll bring it up here. Yeah, because that's... I know that they filmed some of it, but I, I, I haven't heard anything about it being done. I mean, Oh, December. Okay. I'm sorry. Disregard. So if it's done filming, then okay, it, it'll probably still release because it's just being released on a digital platform, you know. Yeah. Um, but Falcon and Winter Soldier, they weren't done filming yet. And so oh, yeah, they had to postpone the Prague it. filming. Yeah. Um, along with this, uh, Antlers, the new Guillermo de Toro produced one. I am so bummed about that one. Yeah, that one's uh, been postponed. We already talked about James Bond being postponed to November. But, you know, it makes more sense because it falls in line with the other ones. Yeah, that one that one we're okay with. I mean, it's a little longer, but sure. Um, Disney's also delayed the announcement for the Avatar 2. Um, you can keep it. <laughs> well, my whole thing is, is like, there, people were talking that they were going to announce that it was coming out within like the next year or so. I'm like, they haven't even fucking filmed anything. Or, sorry, computer generated anything. <laughs> or um, even thought of anything. Well, from my understanding, Cameron's been writing scripts ever since Avatar 1 and has a whole fucking room of writers over there writing. 
you're making it seem like I actually give a damn about any of that. Well, I mean, I'm just saying. You I can know, say I'm that there isn't saying. anything, mm. isn't true. Okay. You it's know still what, a shit idea. You know I didn't like Avatar 1, yeah? Avatar 1 shit. I, I liked some of the premises, some of the areas, and... I don't like any of it. Okay. I'm not gonna go against. You. I, I feel like Cam- I feel like Cameron was trying to be like we're raping the Earth, and so I decided to tell the story of Pocahontas on in space. Uh, invade paradise, put up a parking lot. Yeah, yeah, I uh, yeah, I get it. I, 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 but also the happiest place on Earth also gets pushed back, which is weird. Very true. Um, Disney has uh, announced that starting in two days, the 14th, they will close Disneyland. Um, I'm assuming this goes for Disney World as well. Mm. Um. As well as uh, Universal Studios followed in uh, right after them, saying that they are going to close as well. Um, and they're talking of reopening uh, at the end of the month. So they'll be closed from the 14th to the end of March. Um, they're saying reopen the 28th. I'm assuming that will depend on how everything goes for Corona over the next two weeks. Um, they are saying the hotels will stay open, though. Okay. That's yeah. a. That's a plus. So, I mean, and also it's going to affect um, Universal. Universal Studios is also doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I was mentioning that. Oh, did you? I knew um, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they followed in and said that they are going to close as well. Um, CityWalk and downtown the shops will also remain open. Um, it's basically just a big shopping district. So, mm-hmm. it's like, it would be just like going to the store. So. so, yeah, they are. This coronavirus, if you are isolated, stay isolated. Try not to have a nice outing in a picnic area. You know, just stay inside and have that picnic. The, the big concern is being clean. Clean yourself. Clean, clean, clean. Um, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Yeah, there clean. you go. Go hang out with that little genie. A little. I think I could bench press me. He can <laughs> bench press you with a pinky. Right. With that tough cleaning power. Sponsor us. <laughs> Um, there's also been a travel ban put on for m- most of Europe, uh, for the next like 60 days. Most of Europe. But have you seen the fucking ticket prices to travel? Yeah. It's super fucking cheap. I'm like, Hey, get me a fucking hazmat suit. I'm going to Hawaii. Y- yeah, I know. I'm, I was just like, uh, um, let's actually see. Uh, uh, Italy originally shut down just a small section and, or not small, but a section of Italy and then turned around and. Shut down all of Italy. That dropped hella. Round trip to uh, Tokyo. Round trip to Tokyo, five hundred and thirty-eight dollars. One stop, fourteen hours and five minutes. Yeah, the one stop's probably uh, Hawaii. But holy crap! Holy crap! What is this? Hold on, hold on, hang on. Uh, go. What? No, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here, stalker. No, <laughs> I uh, don't know. I don't know what it was showing you. I don't know what it said. Seventy-seven dollars. I was like, I beg your pardon. So, holy shit! And that's that's to Tokyo. So yeah, five twenty-eight, five thirty. That's not bad. No, I kind of want to pull out a big old loan and just go and get coronavirus and die. There, it's not in Tokyo. Yes, it is. Oh, it's is in it? Japan. I don't know if it's in Tokyo, but it's in Japan. Oh. So. Oh damn. Plus, it's here, so all you need is one person doing what you're doing that already has it, getting on a plane. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> so I might as well go. <laughs> oh my god, I really, oh my god, Quincy, I want to go um, my pants so bad. Along with these closures and whatnot, we also did get the sad news that Tom Hanks and his wife both have it, um, Rita Wilson. Uh, she, I guess it started with them both having aches. Like, they had the flu, and then she was uh, having, like, um, the chills and running a a slight fever. So they went, let's go get checked out, because that's what you need to do. If you're not feeling right, and you think it might be this thing, go and get yourself checked out. They're out in Australia. They went and got checked out, and they got it. They're quarantined for the next, like, couple of of weeks or so um, while they uh, get medication and try to get past it. So... Um. Australia, along with other countries, is doing a very interesting thing where they've got drive-up testing. You drive up, they tell you to stay in your car, the medical person comes out in um, full gear, you roll down the window, they take some swabs, and they run the tests so that you don't have to actually go into the hospital, put other patients at risk, put yourself at risk if you don't have it, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, uh, keep yourself away from anything that is going to be 
public. But definitely go to the doctor if you're not feeling right. Correct. Yeah, those are still expensive. Never mind. Um, Look at you trying to pl- plan travel plans and shit. Leave me alone. Uh, so here's an interesting thing. The stock market is taking a massive hit. Yes, yeah, because of this. Yeah. Because my uh, retirement fund dropped because of this. My 401k kind of it dwindled. It, I, I, I lost $7. It's nothing major. But it's interesting watching these people. What? Oh, you lost $7. But it's interesting watching these people that are like, holy crap, people are sick. Let me rip out all this fucking money from the stock market and watch it screw all of these people. Because I'm panicky. But because they're thinking that the world is going to go to an end. And it's like, okay, if the world goes to the end, what are you going to do with all your money that's probably kept in a bank behind security and you just have a digital I'm, piece of plastic? I'm thinking they're pulling their cash and investing in things like toilet paper. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that. We're, we're not here to talk about that. There's no toilet paper, guys. <laughs> I need TP for my bowl. <laughs> he just pulled up his shirt to do the <laughs> Cornholio joke. All right. Moving on from that. You hurt me, Quincy. <laughs> uh, but yes, moving on from that. Um, Tokyo Godfathers has a 2020 re-release that of with an English dub. Uh, apparently it's not bad because it's got a 90% from critics and a 91% with 13,000 from audience. Um, yeah, I recommend this movie. It's a really heartfelt story. It's very strong, very impactful about three um, very interesting hobos, so to speak, who find a child and their lives evolve. They try and gain back what they lost, in a sense, through the child. Okay. And Tokyo Godfathers really does have this just powerful story. I recommend it fully. Hmm. Uh, it may get some tears out of you. Why do you want me to cry? I, I just want people to feel, damn it. Well, I feel plenty. Mostly anger, but I feel it. <laughs> to be honest, same. Ooh. Um... What else we got? Uh, we got a couple Mortal Kombat things. We just watched the trailer for Mortal Kombat Legend, Legends Scorpion's Revenge. The Red Band trailer. Very bloody. Very curse heavy. Um, good animation. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, a few people from the DC Universe moved over and started doing animations for it. I want to know who... I know it was just a Warner Brothers animation studio, so yeah, I guess it would be just those who worked on most of the DC projects just decided to do it. Yeah. Um, plus, they own NetherRealm, so... Yeah, so, cool. Even still, animation looks good, everything looks good, voices match up their, you know, everything. Cool, good, good, great, good, grand. I thought it was kind of cool. He broke that guy's arm and it was like bone was blue. I like uh, I like this look for Sonya. Sonya, it's not bad. Yeah, and the quote of uh, "You're gonna lay down there like a bitch, or you're gonna stand up and fight like a man." Yeah, no, she definitely still kicks ass in this. I like it. It looks it looks pretty good. I've like heard. Look, how do you like the look of Johnny? It works. Um, I kind of wish she looked a little bit more like the game, but I get the look they were going for, and I'm not angry with it. I mean, he's still got he's still got the. Uh... The look about him, the the swept back hair, the opened up shirt with the jacket that makes him look like he's from the 70s, kind of. I'm curious if he has uh, Johnny tattooed on him. Hmm. Well, that's a question for the movie, but even still, looks good. Goro's in it. Yeah, Goro's in it, doing his whole forearm, breaking your legs and your arms at the same time thing. Um, It, it looks like it's going to... Kind of tell us the story we already somewhat know. Mm. It looks like it's getting a little bit more into why Scorpion's so... Angsty. Yeah, grumpy. So. um, I'll probably check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... Um, so, with the, with the coronavirus breaking out, uh, there was a Mortal Kombat uh, tournament that got canceled. Mm-hmm. Last minute canceled, apparently. I don't know the full details on that, but it was supposed to announce the Spawn gameplay. Apparently, it just dropped online. I, I don't know if it was shown anywhere else as far as beforehand, 
But we just watched the Spawn gameplay trailer for Mortal Kombat 11. What do you think of him? He looks pretty cool. He's not as big as I thought it was going to be. The original drawings and like things I was seeing, he looks a lot bigger, which yeah. made me worry about his movement and yeah. whatnot. And then when I kind of reassured you and said that he looked like Kotal Kahn, he looked pretty Maybe beefy. even a little smaller than Kotal Kahn. I think shorter. But yeah. then again, I think it's because he's doing that pose with his legs. Maybe. But then but, again... Yeah, he moves he moves faster than I than I was originally anticipating. Um, it looks like a lot of his moves can be done from a little bit of a distance. He he's a, he looks certainly like a zoner, yep. but if he wants to get in, it looks like he can get in because of his uh his cape that can allow him to glide. Yeah, there, there's definitely scenes where he's throwing a lot of punches and stuff, but I just noticed a lot of his moves he doesn't have to actually be butted up against the person, you know. He does a lot of stuff with the chains and a lot of stuff with like, uh, like fire and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. and um, gun. Yeah, he does a lot of gun stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he does this thing where he goes invisible, and I'm just kind of curious how that looks as the player. I'm wondering if maybe it looks different as a player versus us watching in this video because he's full on unseeable in this video. Yeah, I, uh, that seems to be a running theme with certain video games: turning invisible and trying to either let make you have the acknowledgement of where he once was so you can, you know, put in some buffered inputs or something. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't, mm, I don't know why that's a theme. I don't like it. I don't like having invisibility be a fighting game thing. I do like his, uh, move he's got for, um, low health. Fi- yeah. Fatal blow. Fatal blow or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. It looks a little Batman ish when he gets up in the air before all the guns come out. And his finisher is pretty cool. I'm curious what his secondary finisher is going to be like, though, because they don't have that on this video. Yeah. Um, I do believe I have the pack that it gets me this. Yep. So I'll probably be able to uh, check out that second, second finisher not too long from now. Yeah. So, uh, what was it, last week? I think so. Well, uh, we talked about how uh, Super Mario and Levi were doing a collaboration. We're looking at a picture right now where a gentleman is wearing overalls and underneath those overalls is a nintendo themed hoodie so i think you're getting your denim 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 yeah i'm hoping because then we went and looked at the actual collaboration page where they've got all the stuff showed and you've got a denim jacket uh looks like it's for women with a bunch of symbols all over it um you've got a red uh sweater with mario uh, and levi kind of on the breast area and then nintendo down the sleeve um then you got a blue shirt with toad and levi kind of on the breast area hey! <laughs> on the back it says woohoo um then you got a white shirt with uh mario and levi dead center it's mario climbing up the like bean sprout thing um and then you've got how would you describe these they're not they're a little long for shorts they come down to about the knee, but they're also kind of tight, so they're not even like the big jorts. Um, uh, skinny jorts. Okay, skinny jorts. Uh, they're just denim, and they've got Mario on the leg. And then there's a Mario tote bag that's, that's made, made out, out of denim. denim, and he's coming up out of the pocket, punching the E on Levi's co- as in a uh, coin to come out. That's kind of cute. I like that. Yeah. I like it. Um, I'm curious to see what else comes out of this, considering the teaser picture was this one. Yeah. So I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't more of this, where it's the uh, overalls with more of a flashy look. Um, the but, other thing is, uh, I do believe they came out and said that they do plan on announcing more. Yep, so. collaboration coming for one, and then the pic Twitter, which is the uh, which is the picture we talked about. Oh, okay. Look, look there's more of it. All right. So yeah, those uh, overalls are. A part of the clo lab when you turn around there's a pocket on the back that coins are coming up out of is that yoshi that's definitely something and then they've got pants and shorts and a jacket that are just completely covered in um mario characters as well as a another denim jacket that says super mario on the back and it's got some of the villains faces bullet bill bowser boo yeah all right so cool um, I do know that Lego and Nintendo got together and did a thing as well. If you scroll down just a little bit more, you'll see it. It's a Mario you build, and he's got electric uh, electronics in him, so his chest and eyes uh, change along with his mouth, and then you have him go through in the little world you built, and so you can have him jump on things and 
it'll do a thing on his chest and show you how many coins you got and stuff like that, and his mouth and eyes interact. That's kind of cool, actually. So, I like that. And then, that's depressing. Yeah. Came across the See You Next Year E3 thing. Yeah. It's all right. The world will get past this and things will go back to normal. Yeah. Hopefully, go back to normal would still be clean. <laughs> um. Oh, they got shy guys that do it too? Uh, I don't think they have interactable like eyes and stuff. I think it's just... No, but I want shy guys. He steps on them and it them. has a reaction. He to destroys him. them. So... Um, what else we got? <laughs> People making the direct thing. Yeah. It's really uh, looking clean. Nintendo Direct, Xbox Direct, Sega Direct, PlayStation yeah. Direct. <laughs> yeah, I'm not mad at that. Nah. I'm not mad at that at all. I mean, PlayStation already does them and they suck, but you know. Yeah. All right. So what's next? We got a little bit of a uh, little bit of shoe news. It's not nerdy shoe news. No, but it is. Awareness news. Yeah. So, but up up shoe news. There you go. Um, so I I have a friend who has a strain of autism, and Vans uh, has it to where they have a sensory inclusive brand that supports charity, and they look actually really nice. <laughs> they look super nice. The only downside is they they're slip ons mostly. Um. They're a little low, but if that one had a bit of a, a higher a higher ankle, I'd be so down for it. They all are in these very nice soft blues, uh, grayish blues, and they, they, they would speak to a lot of people. But I'm very glad that they opened these up. Uh, March 2020 is when it said to release. Uh, let's, let's see, can I get a link for that? I can. Uh, da, 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 da. Or, you know, I don't. That's cool, too. But even so, the images of them, super nice. Uh, go look them up. I, I mean, there isn't any bad ones. No. Um, they got a little bit of everything in there, and you know, it's cool that they're doing something to support awareness and whatnot. Yeah. And then another one I just kind of want to gloss over super quick, if you're on the other side where you want a lot of color... Um, Nike just popped out these groovy, uh, Ad Adept BB 2.0 tie-dye, um, $400 for some very hyper color tie-dye, like not just one or two colors, I'm talking the whole damn rainbow. Um, these things look like those, uh, Tide Pods, but with more color. Uh, yeah, it's definitely got more colors than that. It, it kind of looks like a... Game of Splatoon. Kind of, yeah. It's very colorful. But I just wanted to make a mention of that. Uh, what else? Um, Everyone's going nuts because it was Mario Day, so we just keep seeing Mario everywhere. Yeah, we do. Uh, so I've got a bunch of little things. Now, with the outbreak and everything, we definitely did get hit a little harder on news. Mm -hmm. uh, being kind of light than we normally would. Um... So, let's see here. Uh, the final uh, episode for um, season 12 of Doctor Who has the lowest, lowest ratings since the reboot. Um, they've Oof. already said that they're not canceling the show, but it's kind of clear the audience doesn't like the direction the show's going in. And this is after the season started with like some of the highest ratings it's ever had because of the whole female Doctor thing brought a lot of people in. But it just people aren't liking the way the show's going. Um... Uh, Maximum Venom uh, adds Mary Jane. Um, uh, Felicia Day will uh, play Peter's girlfriend when Spider Man Maximum Venom Season 3 arrives on Disney XD on April 19th. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about her playing MJ, just because her voice isn't quite what I picture, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um,. We already talked about that. Uh, Nightmares of the Wolves writer explains why it's an anime. Uh, it is a story we could not have told in live action any way, shape, or form. Quoting, uh, talking about the new Witcher anime that is a tie-in to the live action show. 
I don't understand how you could not tell it in live action anyway. First of all, they CGI like fucking crazy and things and call it live action, so there's that. Um that 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 uh, I don't if agree. It doesn't, if it doesn't suit your vision, I guess I can see it, but then again, you're doing animation, which is a medium that allows you to do a lot of things. But, oh yeah, no, no, no. Like he's saying it's an anime because they could never do what they want to do in live action. And I don't understand how you could We've got fucking Pacific Rim showing mechs and shit in live action. You know, we those are real. Quincy, those are real. Yes, they're real, Justin. Um Quincy. Can I talk about Santa Claus or no? Don't. Okay. <laughs> like on a more serious note. You're right, but there is a lot of crazy shit in Witcher that would need a little more than CG. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, practical effects and CG, you can do anything. I feel like they're doing anime because it's cheaper. Lately, it's hard to tell. Are you kidding me? Have you seen CGI prices? No. CGI is fucking insanely expensive. Uh, Minecraft library. Hundreds of banned books and articles are available to those uh, in oppressed countries thanks to a virtual library. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Huh. Interesting weird shit. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, more... hey, get you those get you those forbidden books. Yeah, forbidden Minecraft books. Uh WonderCon has also been postponed. Um they're still uh hoping for a uh twenty twenty date, but they're just saying until a later date, as of right now. Ooh, and no word on San Diego Comic Con yet. Let's see if Did you see Ready or Not? Because I didn't. I did. But apparently the directors for Ready or Not have been tapped to helm Scream 5, which will make it the first Scream movie. That's not the Comic-Con I was talking about. I know. This is what I'm talking about. Um, Scream 5, which will be the first time a Scream movie is not directed by Wes Craven. Oh. Yeah, well, we passed, so. I mean, oh, that, you know, they're, they're wanting to continue the torch moving. Yeah. I think they should just left it alone. I would have okay. been all okay. for five if he was still around. I was just about to ask how you felt about it. That answered my question. Uh, Alright, well, the 2020 Amazing Las Vegas Comic Con still going. They did not pull the dates off of it. Yet. Yet. One closure that has happened out here in Vegas is uh, MGM Resorts, which means a lot of different places, not just the MGM Casino. <gasps> Excuse me, sorry. Keep burping. Um, have closed down all their buffets currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a comic con tomorrow. Huh. Huh. It's at the Eastside Cannery, so I wouldn't have wanted to go anyways. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that is. I need to take a look. What is it, North Town? Oh, no, that's uh, Wicked Wicked Eastside Way, Eastside. Okay, sorry. Back to back to what we were talking about. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if, like, end of April, beginning of May, they'll be like, "Amazing Comic Con is canceled. canceled." Yeah. Like I wouldn't. I I even if they didn't cancel it, I don't think very many people are gonna go. Yeah, Lauren's been talking about going, and I'm still not entirely sure how I feel. People if, are dirty. People are dirty. And last year, I remember. Remember, I bumped into that guy that I almost gagged on. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't great. It was not great. Um, Lauren's telling me something. I'm getting an update right now. <gasps> um, but up, up, update. Uh, yeah. On what? What are we getting? We may be in a state of emergency here in Nevada. Uh, for what? I'm trying to check. <gasps> She's not being very forthcoming. She's just like, we're in a state of emergency, and I have to uh, call people for work. And I'm like, we're in a state of emergency? She's like, yeah, it was just announced. I'm like, can you give me more information than that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Steve says, like, declare state of emergency after additional coronavirus area cases. Okay. So, what does this mean for us? I don't know. We have a total of 11 cases identified in the state as of tonight. For any questions, go here. Click. Yeah, that's what I'm at right now. Um, uh, so, literally, we... We're in a we're in a state of emergency zone. We're in a quarantine zone, Quincy. We can play division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
the information about the statewide, yada, yada, yada. Um, okay, so from Las Vegas Locally, which is a uh, tourist-friendly Twitter page, Dear tourists, we love you, but please don't come if you're feeling sick. We'll still be here when you're no longer contagious. Thanks, Las Vegas. Oh, boy. Yeah. I, I, the the click does just can't tell me what coronavirus is. Yeah. So, I uh, I don't. I don't know what this means. Yeah, I don't know what it means either. It just says uh, proactive steps to mitigate the impacts of the virus on our state. The governor declared a state of emergency. He said a total of eleven cases has been dis- identified in the state as of Thursday night, which is today. Today, yeah. Um, it doesn't. Uh, that was the click here. I clicked. It wasn't helpful. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. So it doesn't really tell us anything. It doesn't tell us how to prepare. Well, I mean, it tells us how to prepare, but it doesn't tell us specifically what's up. Like, if there's anything we need to do. Yeah. Alrighty. Oh, testing labs. There is testing labs. Good stuff. Uh, Lab. Oh, LabCorp and uh, Quest Diagnostics are helping out with that. I appreciate both of those companies. There's literally a LabCorp right there. And there's literally a Quest Diagnostics back there. Right. So I mean, too bad the test is three grand. Uh is for, it really? Yeah, for people without insurance, it's like three grand for a test. I'm sure the state will pay for it if they're trying to figure out shit. I'm just curious if I go and I go, I need to be tested because I don't feel right, and they go, do you have three thousand dollars or insurance? And I go, neither. They go, they what? can't. They can't release you. You're quarantined. Okay, but I'm not confirming having it until they test me. You know, I'm curious. Do they test me and then just bill me? <laughs> like, yeah, probably. Okay. Well, you'll get your money eventually. <laughs> I mean, they can't. If they have any inkling that you would have it, they can't. They cannot release you. Yeah. It is no. So. Oh yeah. boy. Well, you what just... to do if you're sick? Call ahead. Um. Cool. Good. All of it. I mean, it's all preemptives, pretty much. Okay. Um, and then the major preemptives are stuff we already know, but it's. It's making sure. So, wash hands with soap and water. Avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Staying away from work, school, or other people if you become sick with a respiratory symptom. Like fever, cough, or sniffle. Even a sniffle will be a problem. Uh, Following guidance from public health officials will be provided if need be. So, I... Remember I had that cough since December? Mm -hmm. Guess what I don't have any of? The cough. That cough. I'm feeling fucking great, except for a headache, but... I'm so glad. I do have a slight cough today, but it doesn't feel anything more than, like... Well, you've been out all day in the... I was going to say, it doesn't feel anything more more than, like, it's been raining for the last couple days, I'm out in it all day, it's muggy. Yeah. So... I was just... And the headache comes and goes. It's not like I'm just crippled with a headache. Yeah. And... Everything else about me is fine. So, yeah. I mean, there, there's something you can do about that area right My there. Face. Yeah. So that's why we call it the Ugly Mugs Podcast. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny joke. Yeah, fuck off. Uh, I got my little thing. If you want me to talk about it, but yeah, you can talk about that. Okay. So, out of all of these games, we've played maybe almost half of them over the course of time. You did my friend, uh, my friend Pedro. Yeah, I was alright. I did Planet Coaster. I did Turok back in the day. I did... uh, back in the day, I played the N64 Turok. Hell yeah, we did. Um, Death's Gambit I've played. And uh, nine, nine, uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just call it 198X. It's 1980X, but um, I think you'd like the fuck out of this game. Okay. Uh, it's about a kid who kind of disassociates in the early, uh, late, early to late 80s. It's very all over the 80s, though. Where he, they, they, they're gender neutral, just that way you can feel for them in your own space, where they just don't feel like they belong. And when they disassociate, they lean into video games. Okay. And they put themselves in it. And so it's not just a slasher, it's just not a racing game, it's not a beat 'em up, it's not a shoot 'em up. It's all of that because that is what you feel. Interesting. Yeah. And it gets a little 
a little more what is it called a little bit more stronger and it doesn't even take that long to play like the whole entire game you can finish maybe two and a half three hours maybe a little under here's another one for you go for it fast nine has been delayed because of coronavirus yikes for a year okay well that's a bit much But uh, Nephilim, uh, another one of these little tiny craft em ups, but it's based on uh, Norse style architecture and otherwise. The backgrounds look fucking sick as shit, though. I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat it. That looks fucking amazing. Uh, AI War 2 is a part of the Humble Bundle. Uh, it's a strategy game that involves space. I don't know. I don't, I'm not too big on it, but it looks looks good. Uh, Aetherborn is a little bit of a puzzle platformer that allows you to defy gravity. Um, it has a very interesting color palette of soft colors all the way across. Um, I like it. It looks fun. I'll probably dig into it later. Uh, my friend Pedro, we talked about Planet Coaster. It's basically Road Coaster Tycoon with a little bit more. Cool. Uh, F1... Eh, I mean, I might grab this one. It's freaking $65. <laughs> and they're offering it for nineteen ninety nine, and you get a choice of eight other games. Okay. So, I mean, that's already a great deal. And you get a, all these other games. So, <clears throat> oh, a Redditor claiming to be close with Bethesda leaked a ma uh, massive and detailed info dump on an upcoming game, all of which is... Uh, under uh substantiated um rumor is elder scrolls 6 will be set in hammerfall uh, hammerfell and high rock okay that, that makes sense and we'll be releasing in 2025 i beg your pardon and we'll be releasing in 2025 okay i just put back on my glasses i couldn't hear you what and we'll be releasing in 2025 they had the nerve to show us a fucking video two years ago of the fucking, like, swooping in to see the title for a game that won't even be ready for another, at that point, seven years? Now, five years? If it'll be ready in five fucking years. If. If. Let's just hope it works. At this point, I'm kind of frustrated with everybody, so I'm just saying, just as long as it fucking works, I guess I can't care, now can I? I will be... Quincy. When this game comes out, I will be 35, 36 years old. I don't like saying that out loud. I mean, I'll be in my 30s. I don't like saying this out loud. I'll be like 32, 33, <laughs> but I'll be in my 30s. My 30s aren't that far off. I just don't, I don't want to be old. I hate to break it to you, bud, but there's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's kind of light on on news. Uh, the world's kind of slowing turned up, down, turned upside down right now. Yeah. Oh God, everything we wanted to talk about has been pushed back. Well, it's like we didn't have big packs because a bunch of people pulled out of packs. There was a lot of indie stuff, but I I don't want to keep pushing all these indie games that I don't know anything about because mm -hmm. I didn't get much of a of any information. I got a few things from a few people, but. Not enough to really talk about it. Not enough to say, hey, Quincy, take a look at this. What do you think? Uh, and I'm not going to go digging into holes. I don't have any idea what to dig into. Doom Eternal did drop a new trailer. So yeah, I saw that. Um, it's pretty much the same stuff we're already used to, to be honest. And Netflix dropped its first look at the new Babysitter's Club. I don't know nothing about nothing on that. It was a book series. And I know it was a book show series. and whatnot. And it was a, wait, wait, back. it was a TV show? I do believe so. Oh. Let me double check. But um, um, it was always a book series first. Yeah, it it was one of those what was it, um, sister traveling pants style things where every, the girls only like the girls because well they only feel for each other. They don't they don't go outside their circle. Oh, it was a movie. It was a movie. Nineteen ninety five. Oh, here's the TV show. Nineteen ninety five. The TV show only got thirteen episodes. Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. Wow. And now they're uh, bringing it back. Cool. Um, speaking of Netflix, so I just finished uh, the movies that made us. It's a documentary, four-part documentary series. Yeah, okay, yeah. 
I um, really like it. They're getting a second season, and I'm super excited. Good. And The Toys That Made Us uh, is on their third season with, I do believe, talks of a fourth season. Um, I really like the first season of The Toys That Made Us. I didn't see the second or third yet. Um, but what I love is it's this... They did this documentary, a four-part documentary about toys, retro toys. And even their theme song sings about how it's just a four-part documentary series because they didn't think they were going to do more than these four. Oh and my God. it blew up so well on fucking Netflix that they had to go through and make a season two, a season three, and come up with a different show. <laughs> um, the company behind it was also doing a documentary. I can't remember the lady's name, but it's on the producer that worked on a lot of stuff, including um, the X-Men 90s cartoon, the one. Yeah, that one. Uh, Disney and Fox are going to sue us. <laughs> uh, we use less than five seconds. We're fine. <laughs> Um, we are in our fair use rights, but uh, yeah, she was like one of the big people behind that, so that's gonna be a big chunk of her documentary. Is gonna be her time on that. Me. So all kinds of good stuff out there. I, I like documentaries. I don't like how almost every documentary out there is. Oh, everything's so sad because it's war, or famine, murder, pestilence, plague, yada war. yada yada. War, war, war never changes. War never changes. Um, I do like those. I just get burnt out. I like to see fun stuff. So yes. when people do fun documentaries like this, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, the only wartime one that I would be more interested in, and it's one that I want to see later on, is Tolkien. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Oh. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'd lean more into... I'm talking, like, full-on documentary, though, not, like, the acted out. Oh, yeah, Even okay. so, though, like, you know, after a bit, it's like, okay, how many times am I going to watch a movie about somebody that was famous and then died? You know? like yeah. So I, I get with the acted out ones too. Mm. Like I like the, the way Hulu did the one for um, George Lazenby though, where it's like he's there being interviewed about becoming James Bond, and then they have actors acting out his story as he's saying it. That was pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Yeah, it was a nice mixture of both things. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't really have much else. All right, back over to my humble bundle then. Yeah, we can finish your humble bundle. Okay. Um. The next game on the list is Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark. It's reminiscent of um, Final Fantasy Tactics or uh, Disgaea. Um, I I love both of those games, so I was already leaning into it. It's pretty much the same fucking game. It's got jobs. It's got uh, character marking. It's it's pretty much fucking Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, Battle Chasers Night War. Uh, this is a nice little top-down, isometric, halfway puzzle, halfway uh, turn-based RPG. I see a Beholder on the poster. Yeah. Um, the art is amazing. It looks all hand-drawn, so I'm not mad at that. Um, all the characters have their individualism. It's a very, very pretty game. I I like this one. Uh, another one that's worth just 30 bucks, which means you're getting a deal off that in total. Uh, EXA Punks, read zines, write viruses, hack everything. This is another one of those programming ones that kind of pulls me away. At least it, that's what it makes me feel like. And I'm going to be frank, not my cup, but I know there's a couple people on my friends list who would enjoy this kind of game. Uh, Zachtronics made this one, so anything made by Zachtronics, you, you know you're going to be using your brain a lot. Um, I like this. I like it. It's just, I don't think I'd activate it, though. Uh, Turok. Yeah. Um, uprendered, and it's um, published by Night Dive. Oh, okay, cool. So, they, they're they doing a lot of good work, and I'm very happy. Uh, Death's Gambit, another one of those uh, Dark Souls-like 2Ds that kind of goes along with Sultan Sanctuary and uh, Dead Cells. Um, beautiful, beautiful art, um, and very tight controls with a little bit of difficulty in the middle. Uh, I already activated it and I already threw it on and I'm just waiting for my chance to get a moment to play it because I know as soon as I start playing it, I'm going to just not exist for a while. Um, either I'm going to rage quit or I'm going to sink some time into it. We'll find out. Uh, and that's it. That's all of them. So, you mentioned Dark Souls in the last one that reminded me. That's Gambit? Yeah. Um, there's a guy that just streamed a thing. He beat Dark Souls without taking a hit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 in one sitting. Mm-hmm. Um, 
he got to the final boss and three and took a hit and restarted at yep. number one. Yep. And did the whole thing. Yep. So, I, I pretty rec- cool shit. That's not his first. Uh, that was at I think AGDQ, but um, I want to say he did it once before and actually got a um, what do they call it? World record, hmm. an actual plaque. Um, I was looking at a video of a couple of different crazy impossible things people did in video games. So there was that one. Um, what was the other one? There was another... Oh, a guy figured out how to beat Fallout 4 without killing anyone. That he, one's impressive. He puts all of his uh, skills into charisma and basically gets other people to kill for him. Killing in the name of... So, yeah. If you check his kill count, it's all zeros because it's like killing those roaches at the beginning. He gets Cogsworth to do it. Never has to fucking pull a trigger. And so on and so forth. and Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. But uh, also beating Dark Souls with uh, the DK bongo drums. Or beating Dark Souls 1 with potatoes. Mm. We live in a society. Yes, we do. The, the, when it comes to those things, those are the things where I stop and go, you're able to wire things together to work with a potato. And this is what you did. We still need a cure for cancer and coronavirus. And you wired potatoes to be controllers. It's not that hard to do that. But you get my point? Like, that creativity, that ingenuity, that time. Sure. Could have been spent on anything else. <laughs> sure. You're thinking about doing it, aren't you? No, it's just... <laughs> it's, not, it, it, it's... It's... As far as science of chemistry making cures for things it doesn't have to be cancer you get my point though basic engineering not having anything to do with that science that would be implemented toward fine he could be making sure the next you know space shuttle doesn't blow up i'll give you that one (laughs) but then again space engineering practical engineering there's nothing practical about a potato (laughs) they're meant for eating (laughs) they're also meant for dark souls (laughs) No, they're meant for eating. They're meant for Dark Souls. Okay, if you could make anything into a controller, what would it be? My eyebrows. Just sit there. Yeah. All day long. Just... I can only move one of them up without the other. Yeah, same. I. It's the same one. That it's the same one you can't do. It's it's your uh, left one. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Huh. I can never be the Rock. That eyebrow look like all the way up. Oh yeah, no, we can't. We're white. <laughs> very true it helps that you know he shaves his head now so he hides that it doesn't go up as far as it used to <laughs> it's gonna be a short one today i think yeah we're both tired we're both a little well, the, the news over. is just kind of everything's focused on one thing and that one thing is also stopping a lot of other stuff so why can't we just be happy because either we're a game of Sims and we peed on the floor one too many times, or Asamaragata. we're not a game of Sims <laughs> and so there's nothing controlling it, and so it's just the chaos theory. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to upload this video and go lay down on your couch. Remember to uh, check out our Twitters. Twada. Twada. Uh, tweet us some stuff. We do we do like talking to people. It may not look like it. It may not sound like it, but we actually do enjoy talking to people. It depends on the people. You're right. Don't come off as douchebags. Yeah. Um, I don't like douchey people. We, we like conversating. Yeah. Let's put it like that. Um, we have an email in case you want to just email us something. Um, we have links for a whole bunch of different things. RuneForge. Get your figures. Um... Tokyo treat, get you some good treats, and I don't remember the third one. Was there a third one? No, we cut out. That's right, we did. So humble bundle. Yeah. Oh, humble bundle. God damn it, that was the third. One. God okay. damn it. We I... did... There used to be another that we did cut out. There was another one we used to cut out. Now, who 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 sells Mister Clean? Is it Procter Gamble? Let's do that or Johnson and Johnson. Okay. okay, well even still, whoever does that, someone sponsor us. Please. Or Lipton. Now you got me curious. Well, I think Lipton's owned by Pepsi. I think so. I think so too. Hey, uh, someone sponsor us. Oh, uh, you're right, Procter and Gamble. Good stuff. 
Um, but hey, sponsor us. We we need. This is pretty much begging in the last five minutes just to get that little bit of extra time out. Do you know there used to be a company called Mr. Muzzle? No. Also, is it raining really hard outside? Yes, it is, and I have to drive in it here in a little bit. Oh. Maybe there's another that one. That looks where... like fucking uh, Papa John's. There's another one where he's like charging at you. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Vibe check. I can't find it. Ah. There you go. Just right there. He's like running at you. <laughs> I'm here fucking to clean. clean. I'm here to clean you. I got you for three minutes of playtime. It used to be. It's still a thing. It's uh, NSC Johnson. Oh. Introduced in 86. Oh, it's a United Kingdom thing. Okay. What? It's in the United Kingdom. Oh. That's why. Yeah, he's, he's coming at me. He's, he's going to kill me. All right, enough about cleaners. <laughs> enough about cleaners. We, we we keep getting distracted today. I, I we're we're pretty much done, and we're just trying to pad for time, even though there isn't much to pad for. Yeah, and we just we want to talk about something, but there's nothing, and that's what really gets us. Yeah, we're not used to being done so soon, unless that was all we had. Like we we finished early, maybe twice on this kind of stuff, but yeah. the, but we didn't have much, and we admitted we didn't have much. Oh. But when we don't have much, but we want to talk about it, but we can't talk about it because it's not good to talk about. Ray! All right, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it, too. Do you have your... Yeah, what's your favorite Bob Marley song? Um, I don't think I have one. Don't worry. Be frappy. I hate it. I love it, but I hate it. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>